So as we know, the pituitary gland is associated with the hypothalamus in the brain. And it's on a stalk. The stalk's sometimes called the uh, infundibulum. Just a technical name for the pituitary stalk. And here we have the uh, large anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. This is the front. The front anterior lobe is the larger of the two lobes. I'm not going to draw the posterior lobe on this diagram because we're focusing on the anterior, but you know it would be here uh, towards the back. Now there's different types of tissue in the anterior pituitary that produce different endocrine products. So for example, there's some cells called thyrotrophs. Thyrotrophs. Now these thyrotroph cells are particular cells. I've drawn them in one location here. Imagine these are where the thyrotrophs live. In, in, in practice, they're sort of diffused actually a bit throughout the gland. But the thyrotrophs, like the other cells in the anterior pituitary, in the adenohypophysis, are stimulated by the trophic hormones, or rather by the releasing hormones, by the releasing hormones produced in the hypothalamus, passing down through the portal veins, stimulating the release of the trophic hormones. So the releasing hormones are produced in the hypothalamus and the particular releasing hormone that stimulates the thyrotrophs is thyrotrophin releasing hormone. So, so thyrotrophin releasing hormone produced in the hypothalamus travels down the portal system, stimulates the thyrotrophs. So you can kind of imagine these thyrotrophs sitting there doing nothing until they're stimulated by the thyrotrophin releasing hormone. Then the thyrotrophs kick into action. And what the thyrotrophs do is they produce the thyroid stimulating hormone. And the thyroid stimulating hormone will then go off and stimulate the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormone. Now there's other cells called somatotrophs. Present in the adenohypophysis, the anterior pituitary. So there's a group of cells called somatotrophs. And again, you can think of these somatotrophs sitting there not doing very much until their releasing hormone is produced by the hypothalamus and will stimulate them. So this would be growth hormone. Releasing hormone growth hormone releasing hormone and that is going to stimulate the somatotrophs and when the somatotrophs are stimulated they're going to produce the growth hormone stimulates many tissues of the body to uh, to grow during childhood too much will cause giantism, not enough will cause dwarfism. But there's also a, a growth hormone, inhibiting hormone, that's somatostasin. So 
somatostasin. That will also affect the somatotrophs, but in a negative way. It will inhibit them. So the more growth hormone, releasing hormone, that effect is positive. That will increase the release of growth hormone from the somatotrophs. But the growth hormone, inhibiting hormone, the somatostasin, will inhibit. That's a negative effect. So there's other cells in the anterior pituitary called corticotrophs. Corticotrophs. Now the corticotrophs Again, they're <coughs> stimulated by a releasing hormone. And their releasing hormone is called um, corticotrophin releasing hormone. CRH, corticotrophin releasing hormone, stimulates the corticotrophs. And the corticotrophs will produce the adreno corticotrophic hormone, ACTH. Everything in endocrinology seems to have initials TSH, GH, ACTH, adrenocorticotrophic hormone. And that's going to go off to the adrenal cortex and produce adrenal cortical hormones such as cortisol. So again, these separate, <clears throat> separate cells, in this case, the corticotrophs. Now there's some, <coughs> some other cells called uh, gonadotrophs. Gonadotrophs. Again, separate cells in the adenohypophysis. Gonadotrophs. And their release is stimulated by the releasing hormone from the hypothalamus called gonadotrophin. Releasing hormone. So when the gonadotrophin releasing hormone is produced by the hypothalamus, that will pass down the portal system to the adenohypophysis, that is the anterior pituitary gland, and that will stimulate the gonadotrophs. And the gonadotrophs, as a consequence, will produce a hormone called follicle-stimulating hormone. follicle stimulating hormone and another hormone called luteinizing luteinizing hormone now the follicular stimulating hormone is going to stimulate the development of the ova particularly in the first half of the menstrual cycle and the follicular stimulating hormone will also stimulate the uh, ovaries to produce more oestrogen. So this is what's activated in puberty and increasing oestrogen production, generating female secondary sexual characteristics. And the follicular stimulating hormone actually is present in men as well, where it stimulates the production of sperm. So it stimulates spermatogenesis in men. So men and women both have follicular stimulating hormone, albeit with different roles. Now the luteinizing hormone, luteinizing means yellowing. It changes the colour of the, uh, the follicle in the ovary. And as well as that, the luteinizing hormone stimulates ovulation. So it stimulates the actual process of the release of the ovum from the ovary. And it also regulates the levels of progesterone in the second half of the menstrual cycle. And in men, 
the luteinizing hormone stimulates the cells in the testes that produce testosterone. So in men, it's the luteinizing hormone that stimulates the release of testosterone. So again, functions in males and females. And the fifth type of cells in the anterior pituitary in the adenohypophysis are called lactotrophs, lactotrophs. So again, a different type of cell, lactotrophs. Now, the release of the hormone produced by the lactotrophs is produced by, uh, stimulated by prolactin releasing hormone. So that stimulates the lactotrophs. And from the name, I think we can see that, that is going to stimulate the production of prolactin. And prolactin, the trophic hormone produced by the lactotrophs, will stimulate milk synthesis in the process of lactation. So what we see, it looks complicated originally, initially, but what we see is that there's a whole range of releasing hormones. So thyrotrophin releasing hormone, growth hormone releasing hormone, growth hormone inhibiting hormone, corticotrophin releasing hormone, gonadotrophin releasing hormone, prolactin releasing hormone, or stimulating the appropriate specialized cells. It's amazing how complicated the anterior pituitary is with all these different cell types. <clears throat> so stimulating the thyrotrophs, stimulating or inhibiting the somatotrophs, the corticotrophs, the gonadotrophs and the lactotrophs. And all of these producing particular trophic hormones. So on this side, these are all the releasing hormones. And on this side, these are all the trophic hormones. The trophic hormones going off, performing all of these functions in the body and regulating the rest of the endocrine system. So we see these levels of control, the ultimate level of control, the master of the endocrine orchestra or the conducting a conductor of the endocrine orchestra is the hypothalamus but it's doing so via regulating the release of these trophic hormones.